and you're ranked 10th in the country, but for some reason it feels like the University of Miami Hurricanes basketball team is under the radar. Yeah, they're not talking about them right now, but they should because they're coming off maybe the most impressive true road victory of the year. And that's a win at Minnesota, very tough place to play the barn. This is a young Miami team that grew up a lot in that road game. Seven of their top 10 players are freshmen or sophomores. They certainly haven't played like it so far. Jim Laranaga's club is clicking on all cylinders in the early going, and they're doing it a lot with defense. Sean, seventh in the nation in points allowed, 58.5 points allowed per game, and that's going to win you a lot of ball games. Yeah, the football team's got the takeaway chain, and the basketball team's taken over right where they left off, and they're priding themselves on defense right now. Coach Laranega was surprised with so many young guys. He kind of thought defensively maybe they'd be a little slow out of the gate this year. That hasn't been the case. They're really pressuring and getting after teams on the defensive end. Your officials for tonight's game, Kip Kissinger, Ron Taberski, and Joe DeRosa. We are underway from Miami. And Miami controls the opening tip. Really important for Princeton to keep Miami out of the lane. Big key to this ball game. Points in the paint. There's Bruce Brown, number 11 in gray. Big time pro prospect at shooting guard. And speaking of shooting, he starts off the scoring with his first triple. He can light the scoreboard in a hurry. Not necessarily from downtown. He's got a good looking shot. So here's the Princeton Tigers. What do we expect from them offensively, Sean? Well, they want to be able to move the basketball. Ball and body movement is important. A lot of times when you hear about Princeton, slow the game down, back cuts. We're in actuality, they want to speed you up on that defensive end. They want to make you play fast so to set up those back cuts. Well, the head coach Mitch Henderson, who was an Ivy League player with Princeton and won a title with them back in the day, said he's recruiting a whole different type of player to Princeton, New Jersey, and that's one of them. Miles Stevens opens the scoring, matching threes. In good possession, the ball went multiple sides of the floor. They want to get that ball reversed, get the ball moving, then try to get some penetration into the lane and kick out the shooters. DJ Vasiljevic, one of the better three-point shooters in the ACC. And he tries from long range and knocks it down. Miami hit some big threes in that game against Minnesota on the road to get that victory, and they pick right up where they left off. There's 33, Sebastian Much, one of the youngsters for this team. And Amir Bell knocks down a three. There have been four buckets in this game, Sean, and all of them have come from long distance. Well, Mitch Henderson was praising Bell. He said when he gets hot, when he plays well, he really likes how this team can be. Good start for Bell, knocking them down from long range. Inside Dewan Hewell. And Hewell misses his first shot, and Jim Laranega likes him to get a touch every time down the floor. A little different matchup for Hewell inside. He had to go against the Monsters inside against Minnesota. Well, Mitch Henderson, seventh season with his alma mater. Second Ivy League title in 13 years. Last season when they went undefeated in the Ivy League and won the inaugural Ivy League tournament. This year, they've gotten off to a little bit of a slow start. They're two and four on the season, but they've won three of their last four. I like where they're going and playing some really good teams along the way. He thinks this team's capable of playing that tough non-conference schedule to get them ready for Ivy League play. Juan Newton saved the ball from going out of bounds and had a clear path to the basket. The first two-point bucket of the game from Jaquan Newton, who's playing in his 100th game for the Canes tonight. And it sure seems like he's been there for a long time, been a part of some very successful teams. And right there showing his biggest strength, getting into the lane, finishing around the rim. Here's Devin Kennedy, the best player on this Princeton team, number three in black. He's their Steph Curry, is how Mitch Henderson refers to Kennedy. There he is, and he can knock down threes with the best of them. 37 minutes a game, and right now coming in, fifth in the nation in three-point percentage. And he's got unlimited range, so he can stretch the defense for you. He need a big night here. He takes some of the pressure off of his teammates against a very good Miami defense. Kennedy has yet to score. Princeton finds a seam and takes advantage. That's Ryan Schwieger 
the freshman out of Matthews, North Carolina with the two-pointer. Yeah, very good drive, and we just talked about Kennedy. He was part of the reason. They're gluing, sticking right to him. He was in the corner that time, so there's no help defense. Allows the open drive there. You don't want Kennedy to beat you, so other guys need to step up when they see those openings. Vasiljevic, he's got the green light anytime he touches the ball. He missed that one. Here's Miles Stevens, 12 in black. Maybe the most versatile scorer on this Princeton team, and he draws the foul on Miami. Miles Stevens, a 6'5 junior out of Lawrenceville, New Jersey. And really, Mitch Henderson relies on his big three. Kennedy, who we talked to you about, Amir Bell, who's got a three-pointer in this game, and Miles Stevens, who also has three, who we just mentioned. They account for an overwhelming amount of scoring for the Tigers. 78-plus percent of the points come from those three players. And they need to be consistent. And then Mitch Henderson's looking for that next piece. Who's going to be that fourth, fifth, fifth option on this team? He's been rotating a lot of parts early on in this season, trying to get some of the young guys into the system, but also looking who can play well together to complement those three guys. And Ibuka Zundu, who checked into the game, tried to force it in the middle. It goes out of bounds, and we have a timeout on the floor. Tenth-ranked Miami, undefeated, coming in, tied at eight with Princeton. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Well, this, of course, the beginning of Jimmy V Week on ESPN Networks. And if you want to do your part, you go to v.org slash donate. And all donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Rich Hollenberg, Sean Harrington, and the rest of the ESPN crew here in Miami for the Hoop Hall Miami Invitational. Miami, a virtual home game, although it's not their home court. They play at the Watsco Center nearby in Coral Gables. And it's a split crowd, you have to be honest, with a lot of Miami sports fans taking in the ACC championship game that's over on ABC. But plenty of love to be given out for this number 10 ranked undefeated Miami basketball team. There's a nice jumper by Amir Bell, his second bucket of the game. And a great start for Princeton. They're making shots, which always makes your offense look a little better, but they're taking care of the basketball. And that's going to be a big key in this ballgame. Don't turn it over against a Miami team that loves to run out and get easy points in transition. Now it's Miami in the half-court set. Nice hedge by Brennan, number 35 in black. And the up and under, no good from Amp Lawrence. And the unforced error. That was Alec Brennan passing it out of bounds. Coming up tomorrow at 4 Eastern on ESPN, the 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Number one UConn takes on number three Notre Dame at the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut. It's also available streaming live on ESPN app. I don't know what Muffet McGraw thinks about her team, but they come in 7-0 and you're playing UConn at UConn? It's not in stores, but it might as well be. That is a tough contest in the early part of this season. Here's Newton. And Chris Likes, the smallest player on either team, has checked in. And he is a bowling ball when he starts rolling downhill. I love watching him play. He plays with so much energy. They're getting into the lane and finishing around the rim. He likes to pick up the basketball 94 feet. Kennedy's first three off the mark and the rebound to his undo. 10-10 game, six minutes gone by. Here's Likes, a highly touted freshman, ESPN number 48, coming out of high school in Maryland. And a nice feed inside. Likes is really starting to get comfortable now. He had four turnovers in his first game in his career at Miami. Since then, hasn't had more than one in a ball game. So really starting to click for him on that offensive end. Good job finding the big man that time. Here's DeRosier, and Jerome DeRosier checking in and making an instant impact. That's one, another one of those freshmen who Mitch Henderson's looking to as a complimentary score. Yeah, who can step up again? We talked about hasn't played in a couple games this year. They're rotating pieces in and out. Good sign there, knocking down a three when he checks into the ball game. And 
Lawrence dialed up to three, no good. And Princeton wants to run. Bell takes it himself and gets fouled. Chris Likes, maybe the smallest guy on the floor. That doesn't stop him from getting into the lane, finishing around the rim. And then the double team comes out. Good job keeping his head up. Finds the big fella rolling to the basket. Hits him in stride, easy finish inside. His nickname growing up was No Fear. And you could see by the way he plays in just this short spur of time. He also has the tattoo on his chest, height or heart over height. Five foot seven is a generous measurement for Chris Light. No question. Most college teams like to add a couple inches. And there he is with the steal. A little too much dribbling yeah. from the freshman that time. Here comes Kennedy on the leak out. Devin Kennedy looking for contact, didn't get a whistle. And speaking of highly talented freshmen, that's Lonnie Walker, number four, to his fellow freshman likes. Lonnie Walker really hasn't gotten on track yet, but when he does look out, they think he is a pro. And he's coming off of an injury, obviously, in the summer, so that slowed him down a little bit. First thing freshmen need is to get out there right away and get those reps in, get that time in. He wasn't able to do that. Coaching staff said they're starting to see some of those flashes in his game coming out in practice. He's going to be a good one. Much for three. And Lawrence has a rebound. Newton calls his own number and knocks down four points for Jaquan Newton, the 6'2 senior out of Philadelphia, Newman Goretti High School. Produced so many talented college basketball players. That's when he's at his best. It will get into that lane, mid-range jump shot. Newman Gritty also producing point guard who starts for John Calipari's Wildcats and Claudia Green, who got past another Ivy League team earlier today in the Harvard Crimson. Lawrence, another rebound. And he's going to play a little bit smaller with Lawrence at the four, and he does a good job going and getting those boards. That allows you to play a little bit smaller. Likes hits the reset button with 10 on the shot clock. Here's Newton. And now Princeton will walk it up. Good job by Princeton early on limiting Miami to one shot. Each possession will be a big key. Newton Gamble tried for the steal and came away empty-handed. That's something that this Miami defense has to be careful about. And there, Devin Kennedy burns him up the middle. Well, Devin Kennedy, the leading scorer on this team at just a shade under 20 points a game, has his first two of this night against Miami and a chance to make it three. Princeton up one with 10.43 to go. And number three looking to make it a three-point play. That was Jimmy V's dream. The Big Apple is lit. Zags and Cats, Deuce in Connecticut. It's the Jimmy V Classic. A terrific two-pack of basketball from the Mecca in Madison Square Garden coming up Tuesday. But more importantly than basketball, Sean Harrington, of course, it's the Jimmy V Classic. And that means everyone is encouraged to go to v.org slash donate and make their contributions to ending that disease. And everyone that we know, everyone in our lives have all been touched by cancer. We were talking to head coach Mitch Henderson about it as well. This is one of those times of the year where even though it's only December and the games might not meet as much as they do when you reach conference play in the postseason, this week always feels special at ESPN. Absolutely. Just a terrific mentor we all had in Jimmy V and what he did for basketball not as a coach but an analyst. If you're just joining us on ESPNU, welcome into American Airlines Arena in Miami, Florida. Rich Hollenberg, Sean Harrington, the nightcap of the Hoop Hall Miami Invitational. The undefeated 10th ranked Miami Hurricanes trailing by two to the Ivy League's Princeton Tigers in the first game of this doubleheader. Number two, Kansas overwhelmed the Syracuse Orange, remaining undefeated with a 76-60 win. And now Miami looking to join the Kansas Jayhawks at 7-0. Kennedy misses the open J. 
Miami head coach Jim Laranega calls that a Jerry West jump shot. Shows how old school he is. They're calling the Steph Curry. Jerry West in his book. Loose ball, and Princeton comes away with it. What's, been, what's Princeton been doing so well to have this two-point lead? They haven't had any turnovers that have led to easy baskets for Miami. That's the first thing. And then defensively, keeping Miami out of the lane and limiting the one shot per possession. That was a pretty take by Sebastian Much. He just couldn't get the two to fall. Here's Brown. And he gets the miss. Out to Walker. Boy, is that a great sign for Miami Hurricanes fans. And that's what we just talked about. Missed shot leads to a run out for Miami. Has Princeton out of control on the defensive end. And an offensive rebound kick out to a three. That's a second chance opportunity. Miami hasn't had a lot of those. They made Princeton pay that time. Miami has three three-pointers in the first half by three different players. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Sam Wardenberg, the freshman who's just checked in. The ball gets kicked out of bounds. It'll stay Hurricanes ball. Well, Miami, heady times in that athletic department. They're the only team in the nation that has a college basketball team and a college football team in the top ten. And, of course, those Hurricanes are taking on Clemson as we speak in the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. But Jim Laranega has really ushered in a brand new era here in Coral Gables. And this is the most talented roster that he's had in his seven years. Yeah, a couple nice runs in the NCAA tournament, getting to the Sweet 16 a couple times. And now he's got a very talented and a very young group. And a team that he really enjoys being around and coaching. So they want to learn. And this the other day, Lonnie Walker watching some film with the assistant coaches, seeing things that he did well, but also seeing things where he could improve. And you have a group that's coachable, especially a young group, you're going to see a lot of improvement throughout the year. Not only coachable, but Sean, as you know this, being a player and a coach yourself, to get the youngsters to buy in on the defensive end is probably the biggest task when they first get into the program, and these young freshmen have. No question. That's usually the knock on a freshman coming in is they don't guard. You didn't really have to guard in high school. You were more athletic. You were stronger. You were bigger. You can go through the motions and overpower somebody defensively. Not the case. When you get to that next level, play at the college level, I'm very impressed with how Miami's been on the defensive end. They want to pressure, they want to get after it. Try to turn you over. Brown spins left, gets it to go, and has a chance at three the hard way. Bruce Brown, who opened the scoring in this game with a three from beyond the arc, now has a chance to get three the conventional way. Really good body control. Getting into the lane, spinning, taking the contact. That's where you see that strength. Finishing with that contact. Using the glass. To give you an idea of the versatility of Bruce Brown, he had a triple-double earlier this year and won a year ago. Just the sixth ACC player ever with two career triple-doubles. Tree Rollins is on that list. Ralph Sampson's on that list. Pretty good names to be associated with. A lot of NBA with. players on that list, and Bruce Brown will be one of them. Here's Kennedy. Blocked from behind. See all eyes on Kennedy. Anytime he catches it, either a trap or guys flying at him. Good contest that time from the corner. And Joe DeRosa says we're going the other way. We have a timeout on the floor. Miami up by four on the Princeton Tigers. 20 to 16, 748 to go. ESPN's exclusive present. Ivy League schools can say they have a former NBA player on their bench. I'll answer it for you. One, and that's the Princeton Tigers. Kerry Kittles, who had a dynamic career with the Villanova Wildcats, then was the number eight pick in the draft back in the 90s to the New Jersey Nets. Spent a great NBA career, but wanted to transition into coaching and found a home in Princeton, New Jersey, where last year in his first year as assistant helped lead that team to an undefeated Ivy League campaign. And now in his second season, Mitch Henderson, the head coach, told us, Sean, he is such an invaluable component to this coaching staff. Obviously, he has the ear of the team because of his NBA ties, but he is a cerebral assistant coach. He got his NBA after he finished his NBA career. So he is not only bringing the smarts of basketball, he's bringing the smarts between the shoulders as well. Yeah, absolutely, and everything that Princeton stands for, believes in, Come play high-level basketball and get the best possible education you can get. And that's something that Kerry Kittles obviously played at the highest level, but also bringing it off the court as well. And 
What a mentor for these guys to look up to and be around every single day in practice. Anthony Lawrence chips in with his first two. It's an 8-0 Miami run. So Stevens try to force it up. Princeton won for their last 11 field goals. What do you like from this Miami defense that has such great numbers coming in? Very athletic, obviously fast. And they can switch so many positions. You look out there and you see the size of them. They're able to switch ball screens or trap ball screens, fly around on that defensive end, kind of cause some havoc, really interchangeable parts that you don't see on every team. And there's Chris Caputo, the bald-headed gentleman sitting there on the Miami bench. He is what Jim Laranega refers to as his defensive coordinator. You think he's got some football ties, Laranega, as his Miami Hurricanes compatriots are competing for a national football, or a college football, should I say, playoff spot. And Caputo has done an outstanding job getting buy-in from all these Miami Hurricanes players. Brown has another three. That's his second three of the night. And playing Nine with, points for Bruce yeah, Brown. Playing with a lot of confidence right now. You can see that one. As soon as he caught it, it goes straight up into his jump shot. That's what you want to see. No hesitation. And a timeout called on the floor. Bruce Brown, who had 16 points, nine rebounds, and five dimes in their win on the road at Miami, is leading this Canes team 25-16 over Princeton. Yeah, we know how good of an athlete he is. Here he's in transition. Takes that one bounce in rhythm right into a jump shot. No hesitation. Good lift, good rotation on the basketball. Feeling very confident in his jump shot. Only about a fourth of his shots come from beyond the arc. Really good at getting into the lane, finish around the basket. That'll be the next phase in his game. Continue to work on that shot. He's looking good here tonight, knocking him down. Last season, he was 40% for three in ACC play. Princeton needs a bucket desperately. One for their last 11. And Bell thought he had it, but it rolled out. A lot of tough shots right now for Princeton. Everything's contested. They can get a nice possession. They can get that ball reversed back to back. Get some more movement. A little quicker pace on that offensive end on their cuts. Quick turn from Azundu, and it doesn't go off the window. Here comes Princeton. Deep three from Kennedy. He's got gym range. He has the green light on that, but he missed that one. In transition, what a pass. Touch pass to Vasiljevic. But the foul is called on the floor. Too bad for Vasiljevic that that didn't go because he rarely shoots anything but three-pointers. This would have been a rare two-point bucket for DJ. Nice touch pass there from Newton, Miami. Explosive in transition. Got a foul on the floor, and again, it's going to go on Princeton. A little bit of a bailout foul as the fadeaway from Newton was an ill-advised shot. You don't see Newton miss like that too often in the lane. Usually so good getting into the into the paint, scoring around the rim, good body control. With Syracuse previously undefeated going down today at the hands of the Kansas Jayhawks, Miami is now one of just 14 teams to remain undefeated on this college basketball season. And they look to keep that going with Bruce Brown in double digits with 11. He's been terrific. He's showing a little bit of everything here now tonight. That time, the runner using the glass. Miami team has a chance to make some noise in the ACC. Another terrific year for the ACC. Lots of ranked teams. Nice take by Miles Stevens. He has five. And the lead is nine for the Hurricanes. Princeton's got to get some stops here now. Miami's in a little bit of rhythm. A lot of it's Brown. I'm going to try to limit some of his touches here if you can. And Joe DeRosa says Bruce Brown got a little overly creative with the basketball. Called for the traveling violation. Well, defensively so far, Miami has played up to their reputation, holding Princeton to 18 points 
Jim Laranega telling us the, the key tenets to that are contest every three without fouling, don't allow back cuts, which is a staple of a traditional Princeton offense, and defend those straight line drives. You check the box on all of those so far. Absolutely, they've been great, and they've been locked in here on this defensive end. They cause another turnover. There's Newton in transition and the follow slam by Azundu. Good job by Azundu to not give up on that play. Followed it in, finished it. Again here on this defensive end. So often you're taught to jump to the basketball, stay between man and ball. That's not the case when you go up against an offense like this. You want to stay between your man and the basket. And Miami's done a really good job of that, not allowing any of those back cuts here tonight. And another triple by Bruce Brown. He has 14, really feeling it with his third three of the evening. Defense leading to offense for the Canes. Miami starting to pick it up, getting out in transition. Tough team to stop. Newton can't get it. Azundu can. Big finish inside for the big guy. An 18-2 run for the Canes. They're up 14. SVD follows all the games on Championship Saturday. Reese Davis, Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet, and Booger McFarland join the show to talk college football playoff top four. Plus, head coaches from around the country lobby their case. And Tiger Woods struggling in the third round today at the Hero World Challenge at Sports Center at Midnight Eastern with SVP. Tiger certainly making things interesting in the first couple of rounds, jumping out to an early lead, looking a little bit like his old self before falling just a little bit back to the middle of the pack. It's good to have him back and just makes it exciting when he's in the hunt, being right there. Terrific for the game of golf. And of course, that college football playoff got a little bit muddier with Georgia's convincing win over the Auburn Tigers. I think it's safe to say that Auburn's out. That was their third loss of the season. But who's in is what everyone's asking. Absolutely, it starts. The controversy now, who's going to start jumping those spots? That's an offensive foul on Azundu. And in the other game concerning a Miami Hurricanes, Hurricanes athletic team, the Canes football team is trailing 7-0 against the Clemson Tigers. That game being played in Charlotte over on ABC. And maybe this young football fan is watching the Canes on the ESPN app. Multitasking. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Under three to go. Number three, Devin Kennedy with another bucket. Second field goal of the game for Kennedy. He has five. Miami's done a really good job. Kennedy can really score the basketball, and they just have not given him any open looks. Hard for him to get into a rhythm so far without getting a good shot, a good look at the rim. Errant pass by Bruce Brown out of bounds, sailing over the head of Amp Lawrence. It'll be Princeton basketball. Brown's been terrific scoring the basketball. That time trying to get a teammate involved. That one sailed on him. Miami undefeated at 6-0, ranked 10th in the country, coming off arguably the best true road win of the season from any team in the country when they took down Minnesota at the barn earlier this week. A really tough environment at Minnesota, sold out. It's a good Minnesota team, very physical. Good defense on the inside. Didn't go for the shot fake, that was the key there. Stayed on the floor. You always tell the defensive player, don't leave your feet until the offensive player leaves theirs. Good job by Lawrence that time, being disciplined on defensive end. And Lawrence on the other end called for the traveling violation. Miami very unselfish, averaging over 16 assists a game. Trying to go inside outside on this Princeton D. With 20 assists in that game at Miami. That was a big key. Ball was moving. Everybody was getting involved. Five players scored in double figures in that win against the Golden Gophers. Under two minutes to go. It's been... All Miami, the latter part of this first half. Princeton really struggling against this athletic Hurricanes defense. Vasiljevic passed up to three. And he still has a chance to make it three. What a move by DJ Vasiljevic. 
And good ball movement to set him up. And you're going to fly at him. That's the scouting report. Don't let him shoot from behind the arc. Over 70% of his shots are going to come from three. So run him off the line. That time DJ did a good job using the shot fake. Get into the lane. Take that contact finish. He's shaking up a little bit trying to walk it off. Vasiljevic, a 6'3 sophomore from Melbourne, Australia. Actually born in Canada of Serbian descent, but grew up in Australia. Coming over here last year in his freshman campaign for Coach L. 51 three-pointers. That's the most ever by a freshman in school history. And that's on the top of the scan report now. Fly at him. Good use of the shot fake. We're going to have to see him doing a lot of shot faking this year. Kennedy almost banked in the three. Walker goes down. Look at Kennedy fighting for the loose ball. And a jump ball, and it'll be possession arrow Princeton. Well, when your best player is getting on the floor like that, that inspires the whole team. And he knew it here. Watch how quickly he gets in there after he releases it. He's already down there by the basket. And then diving on the floor. Gets his team an extra possession. Good hustle. Would have been easy for him. Put his head down. Bad shot. Goes off the backboard. And he stays with it. Earns his team an extra possession. He is an elite level shooter in any conference, let alone just the Ivy League. Coming off 27 points in their loss to Lehigh a couple nights ago. Here's Kennedy in the corner. Terrific defense on Kennedy. They are all over him, not giving them any space at all. Great hands look. by Lawrence forcing the turnover. Gotta be careful against this Miami defense. You put the ball on the floor, it better be one or two quick dribbles into your move. His hands are coming in there, digging down, trying to create turnovers. Under a minute to go. 15 point Hurricanes lead. Lonnie Walker for three. Second triple for the freshman out of Reading, Pennsylvania. Lonnie Walker with six. You mentioned McDonald's All-American. Starting to find maybe a little more of that rhythm. Every game he plays, getting a little more comfortable. That jump shot starting to come. Starting to feel good. Nice look inside. And Brennan can't finish. Shot clock and game clock virtually identical. Miami's going to take the air out of the ball just a little bit and settle for the final shot of the first half. They've jumped out to an 18-point lead and a use-it-or-lose-it timeout called by Jim Laranega. Well, Jim Laranega is such a grandfatherly presence with this team and and i mean that in the best way possible because if you think about your relationship in large part with the grandfather what it, you don't want to disappoint him and that's what these players have laranega wears adidas uh shoes on the court that cost a thousand dollars the only reason he told us that is because he wants to wear stuff like that to relate to his young players and yet he still has that grandfatherly way about him and clearly from the talent that you see of this team they have really bought in. And there it is. He even has his own name on it. Yeah. How about that? That's big time. You get your name on your shoe. You got the orange laces. The guy's got to love that. Wearing the sweatsuit on top of it as well. Coach L, as they call him, 34th year overall as a head coach. 615 career wins coming in. Puts him in the top 15 overall of active winning coaches. And obviously, he looks a little bit more professorial when he stalks the sidelines in game. Right. 10 seconds to go. All Miami taking on the Ivy League's Princeton Tigers. Three to shoot. And the horn sounds ending the first 20 minutes of play in the nightcap of the Hoop Hall Miami Invitational. It's been all Canes ending the half on a 24-4 run spanning the last nine and a half minutes of the first half. Princeton in the midst of a three for 22 drought. Big lead for the Canes, ranked 10th in the country. Now we go to the studio for our halftime report. Undefeated Miami Hurricanes shooting almost 55% from three-point range, 48% overall, and they have an 18-point lead over the Princeton Tigers.
on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Alongside Sean Harrington, I'm Rich Hollenberg. We are thrilled to be a part of the beginning of Jimmy V Week on ESPN as we present the nightcap of the Hoop Hall Miami Invitational, the start of the second half where the 10th ranked undefeated Miami Hurricanes lead the Princeton Tigers 38 to 20. And Sean, Bruce Brown has led the way for a balanced scoring attack for the Canes. He's been terrific on the offensive end. And we know how athletic he can be getting into the lane, finishing around the basket. It's been from deep, three for three from beyond the arc. Hot start on the offensive end for Brown. Looks comfortable knocking down those threes. Team shot six for 11 from three point range and a major disparity in all those key numbers you see there. Field goals, three point for, for field goals. You would assume going in that the rebounding edge would be to Miami and it has been 21-13. But Princeton comes out loose and founding a turnover. Miami just so good at getting into the lane. That's what you expect of them scoring in the paint when they start knocking down threes and knocking down the high percentage. It's a tough offense to stop. Good defensive possession for Princeton out of the gate. Offensively now, keep the ball moving. Will Gladden coming off an injury. Flips up a left-hander and gets it to go. He's played seven minutes in the last game. First game back, trying to get him healthy, getting him some minutes here. Good job using the hook there over the taller defender in Huell. And we rhetorically asked this question coming into this game. Would Miami have a letdown after that huge road win against 12th-ranked Minnesota? In the first half, obviously, the answer was a resounding no. I guess my follow-up question for you, Sean, is could they have a letdown at the start of this second half? Yeah, absolutely. That's what you look for if you're Jim Laranaga and his staff is how does this team play when you have a big lead at the half? You want to play the same way no matter what the score is? This is a young team, so very impressed with the way that they came out. Very focused, locked in after a huge win on Wednesday at Minnesota. How will they respond here in the second half after playing a great first half? They tried to get the ball into number 20, Dewan Huell, who shockingly had zero points in the first half despite an 18-point lead by the Kings. And you can see they talked about it maybe the half. Let's get Huell involved, get it to him. This is three straight possessions. He's going to get a touch around the basket. Finally has a chance to get some points at the line as he's fouled there. Juan Huell coming off a career high, 23 points in their win against Minnesota. And Jim Laranaga after that game said the reason he had 23 was that his guards were feeding him because he set such good ball screens for them. Yeah, if you're a big man and you set ball screens, you'll get rewarded on the back end. Absolutely. A lot of high ball screens at the top of the key, and those guards did a great job splitting doubles or getting into the lane and then find Huel, finding Huell, and he was able to finish going towards the basket. Coming into the season, Dewan Huell, the 6'11 sophomore out of Miami, said his goal was to average 12 points a game and 10 rebounds a game. And he really stressed the rebounds more than the points. And Miami wants to play smaller. And if they're going to play smaller, Huell's got to be the guy that's got a rebound. He knows guards to get in there, but yeah, he wants to get that double-double. That's going to help this team as they continue to be quick and athletic on that perimeter. There's Miles Stevens, his second three-pointer of the night. He has eight. And Princeton's cut the halftime lead of 18 down to 14. And dear Princeton, you talked about it. You have to win each segment now. Take this second half in the four-minute games. Can you win those first four minutes? Come into that first time out, feel good about yourself, chip into that lead, and you want to be hanging around there when this game gets under 10 minutes. Brown continues the stroke. 17 for the sophomore out of Boston. And that's impressive. And shooting with confidence coming off the screen. Much tried the back door, but defended very nicely by number 11, Bruce Brown, showing that He's not just an offensive player, he can play on the defensive end as well. Yeah, good job snapping his neck back to see that defender going back and then throwing out that hand to get the deflection. We have not seen Princeton make those back cuts and get those back doors. Very good defense for Miami. They've been disciplined. Not let that offensive player cut behind them. Gladden left hand, no this time. And Amp Lawrence has another rebound. Nine rebounds for Amp Lawrence tonight. 
Tried to put the exclamation point on that possession with the three, but came up short. And now Gladden is hobbling down the floor, and they're trying to work him into the rotation after an injury, and it looks like Will Gladden might be going back to the bench. He looks to be in a tremendous amount of pain. You hate to see that. You see the sleeve he wears on that right knee, and he's certainly favoring it on the way back up the court. Looked like he came down anybody's ankle or anything like that. Just maybe gave away a little bit on him. It was obvious right away when he turned to run up the floor, was in some pain. Will Gladden, a sophomore out of Chesterfield, Missouri. 6'10", 255. You see the human aspect coming into the game. The guys work so hard to overcome an injury and come back. Just hate to see it. Anytime somebody has to leave the game and you hope it's nothing serious. And I love this exchange between Bruce Brown and DJ Vasiljevic. Basically, and I'm paraphrasing just by watching their body language. Brown's telling him, there's no need to reach in on there. You got help. That's what this team is founded on. And it's two sophomores. And there was a nice inbounds play dialed up by Mitch Henderson, getting an open look for Kennedy. We like the communication from Miami between possessions there. Not very good communication <laughs> right. on the out-of-bounds play. It led to an easy basket, but really important. You mentioned it. Two guys talking out there. Coaches try so hard to get players to talk to each other. you got two young guys trying to work it out on the court. Inside, Jewel again can't find the bottom of the bucket. No field goals for Dewan Huell, averaging 15 a game coming in. And Newton wants to run. And he just can't get it going on the offensive end. Catch and fire from Vasiljevic. That's his specialty. Second three-pointer of the game for DJ. And he has nine. Good push and transition. Got to find those shooters around the perimeter. And Huell has an easy two, his first field goal tonight coming on a two-hand breakaway dunk. We have a timeout on the floor with 15.48 to go. And the Miami Hurricanes rolling up 20 on the Tigers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Oh, the yin and the yang of being a Hurricane sports fan. Here inside American Airlines Arena, the University of Miami basketball team dominating. But at the Hurricanes watch party in the ACC football championship game, not so friendly for Canes fans. They're down big to the Clemson Tigers as fans of Miami look on inside the AAA as they root on both of their teams. And it, yes, sir, it is all about the U no matter which team you're watching, no matter which team you're rooting for. But these Miami Hurricanes on the hardwood have certainly been impressive tonight. Eight for 14 from three, 20 paint points. They're doing it inside and outside. Nice pull up that time from Bell. Showing the mid-range game. Nothing's coming easy for Princeton. And a foul on the floor, so we'll take another timeout. Step aside with 15-19 to go. And Miami up 47-29, looking to remain undefeated. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Well, we hope you join us and head coach Jim Laranig and everybody part of the college basketball community in donating to the V Foundation at v.org slash donate. Jim Laranega telling us very poignantly earlier today at practice for the Hurricanes how it was sadly ironic that his father John passed away from cancer the same week that Jim Valvano passed away from cancer. And he of course, just like so many people who have been in college basketball for the last few decades, had great stories to share with us about his interactions with Jimmy V, who, as we all know, even if you didn't know the man and you only saw him on TV, 
he could light up a room. And Jim Laranega was telling us his anecdotes about Jimmy V and, and those same kind of stories. It was, it was a nice moment to share with Jim Laranega, who's so giving with his time to raise money and recognition to the V Foundation. And Jimmy V, just a special person. Obviously, as a coach, everybody knew him. And the Survive in Advance, one of the best 30 for 30s you can watch. And shows his personality and how much life he lived with and the energy and passion not only on the court but off the court and it carried over and obviously a great cause Jimmy P Foundation somewhat kindred spirits both grew up in the metropolitan New York New Jersey area both got into coaching and were certainly lifers both had strong father figures as Jim was telling us earlier today Just a funny anecdote to that story when he was talking about his dad. He called him John D. And I said, well, why John D? He said, well, nobody really knew how to pronounce our last name. He pronounces it one way. My brother pronounces it another way. I pronounce it another way. We'll stick with how Coach L pronounces it. It's Laranega. But he said his brother pronounces it Laranega. And his dad from the New York area pronounces it Laranaga. <laughs> Forget about it. That three by Alec Brennan, his first points of the game. 15-point game, Princeton trying desperately to hang around, but that's not gonna happen when the likes of Chris Likes are knocking down threes. He may be 5'7", but obviously his game's a lot bigger than that. Knocking it down with some range there. Yeah, Coach Laranega compares him to undersized guards he's had in the past, like Shane Larkin, Angel Rodriguez more recently. That's high praise. Both those guys are winners, too. Absolutely. There's a stolen pass by Newton. And he can't complete in transition. Likes. Wild shot by Newton off the mark. And Laranega is searching for someone to take Jaquan Newton's spot on the bench. That jumper's good by Amir Bell. 15-point game coming up on 12 minutes to go. Princeton, preseason number three. Obviously, the Ivy League has continued to improve quality-wise in basketball. Harvard, very good under Tommy Amaker. And Yale, the last couple of years, has been really strong. They're giving TCU all they can handle right now, as a matter of fact. What do you see from Princeton? We know Mitch Henderson said he likes this team. Yeah, right now you're seeing it's it's the big three, and we've talked about it. Bell, it's Stevens, it's it's Kennedy, and those three guys are very capable of carrying this team and making a lot of noise in the Ivy League. And they're still searching maybe for that fourth or fifth fifth option to kind of come up with those guys and have a group that plays well on the floor. But those three have been impressive so far, and Bell showing us some flashes again here tonight. Lonnie Walker has his first bucket of the second half. That's eight for Walker. His season high is 10. So slowly but surely, that ESPN top 20 pick in his freshman year is coming along for Jim Laranega. Chris Likes, another freshman, lighting it up. The Canes up 17. Back here at the Hoop Hall Miami Invitational, time to take a look at the Shining moment brought to you by Zales, and certainly Bruce Brown has shown all night long, Sean. He's been terrific, and the surprise has been from beyond the arc. He is lighting it up from the outside. Four of five from three. He's got those 17 points on only eight shot attempts. That's efficiency, and that's what you like to see if you're the Hurricanes. 17 from Brown, a season high. His career high is 30. Owner of two triple doubles in his time here at Miami. And a rare whistle blown. That's Richmond Ariri Guzzo, who gets fouled on the play. 20 on the shot clock for Princeton. Kennedy the pull up. Devin Kennedy has nine points. But they've really been able to hold him in check tonight, which is not an easy task, averaging, averaging just 
under 20 points a game. And Miami's defense has been terrific, and that was a difficult shot. Well contested, Kennedy just really good offense. And what you saw there was the strength of Lonnie Walker, the fourth's offensive game. If he can turn the corner on you, he is a load. You don't see many freshmen coming in with a body like that already. It's usually what they look like their sophomore year when you can give that strength coach a year to improve, but coming in already with that athleticism and the strength and we mentioned injury in the summer. Wasn't able to be with the team practicing. So he's gonna see major improvements as this season goes on as he continues to get those reps in practice and also those game minutes. And the best teacher is watching film. Yeah. And when he rolled his left ankle against a and it really hindered that speed of his that no one yet has really seen. And once he gets going, Jim Laranaga in the offseason referred to him as Usain Bolt on the basketball court. Can you imagine his size combined with that speed? But we haven't seen that total package yet from Lonnie Walker. The ACC is forewarned, though, as he rounds back into game-playing form. Miami preseason fourth in the ACC. As usual, Duke number one. I don't think anybody would argue saying they're the best team in the country. Where do you think... Miami could fit in league-wide as we get into conference play in January. Well, they're definitely a top four team. And it depends how this young group continues to improve, get better on their game. And if they can guard the way they're guarding right now, come league play, they're going to be a difficult team to play against. And you mentioned that. Obviously, Duke traveling all over the place, playing top-notch games right now. The competition that they've been playing against and winning those games has been impressive. Well, Miami's going to do a little bit of the same. They've got BU on their schedule coming up. Then they go to the nation's capital to take on GW. And then it's out to the Diamond Head Classic for them. Uh, at least a couple games. They'll play three out there. The first is going to be against Hawaii. And then they'll open up ACC play at Pitt. But you talk about some key games for these Miami Hurricanes, at least as it looks now. January 15th, Duke at home. January 24th, Louisville at home. And the two big road games on that ACC slate at Notre Dame on February 19th and then at North Carolina on February 27th. So it's a long conference schedule with a lot of good quality teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference as usual. Yeah, the ACC is going to be terrific again, obviously. You start looking around at the top of that league, the Dukes, the Carolinas, Miami, Notre Dame, those are the teams that have jumped out early. Louisville, obviously, right there in the mix when you start talking top of the conference. But it's a very deep league, and they've proven it. Come NCAA tournament time, getting multiple teams going to the Elite Eight the last few years. Never an easy one. And you have to defend home. You mentioned key games there at home. you got to win those if you want to be in the top half fighting for that conference championship. Lonnie Walker showing the range. He has three three-pointers tonight, 12 for Walker. That's a new season high in his freshman campaign. Brown and Walker, we talk about their athleticism, and it's off the charts. When they start shooting the basketball like they have tonight, that is a tough guard when they can become two-dimensional. Kennedy knocks it down. We were talking at practice this morning. Has there ever been a team that features the top two shooting guard prospects for the NBA on the same team? That could be what Lonnie Walker and Bruce Brown are to most NBA scouts, and there are a lot of them here at American Airlines Arena looking at both of them. And we just mentioned that's probably never been done to have two guys like that on the same roster. And with both of them continuing to improve on that three-point shot, it has looked terrific, leaving both of their hands here tonight, shooting with a lot of confidence, getting good lift and elevation on that jumper. Circling back to our ACC conversation, I'm interested to hear your take on Louisville more specifically. I'll be honest with you. I'm a little surprised after all that went down with that program and Rick Pitino being removed from his head coaching spot that a lot of people I've been hearing still talk about them as a potential Elite Eight type team. There's a lot of talent on that roster. and Tough loss the other night at Purdue. Very difficult place to play, but that is a team that... They can stick together and get through all the off-the-court issues that are surrounding that program right now. The talent is there, and they can make a deep run come March. Yeah. 
Deng and Dell, really, really good. Certainly going to be in consideration for all ACC. And I guess you give a lot of credit and respect to David Padgett for stepping in there in what, what can only be a, an impossible situation and making the absolute best of it, at least right now. And you're replacing Rick Pitino, obviously legendary coach, and those are big shoes to fill. And then coming into the situation that he had to take over, David Padgett's done a good job getting his team's attention, trying to focus in at the task at hand. And I just mentioned the teams in the ACC. It's not going to be easy, but definitely have the talent to compete to finish in the top four of the ACC. How about Mike Bray, the job that he's done at Notre Dame? Talk about a team that's flying under the radar a little bit. He's Ooh. just been terrific at Notre Dame and took the L at Michigan State, but there's no shame in that, certainly. Absolutely. I just love the fact that he wore a t shirt during the Maui Jim Maui Invitational and after they won in the locker room, took that shirt off and put the lay on, the championship lay. And I know via Twitter, Mike Bray said, so much attention on that T-shirt I wore. Let's do something good. And he's raising money with that T-shirt at Notre Dame. Good on you, Mike Bray. 18-point lead for the Kings. Rich Holmberg, Sean Harrington from the American Airlines Arena, the nightcap of the Hoop Hall Miami Invitational. Jim Laranega looking to take his Miami Hurricanes to 7-0 on the season. They are currently ranked 10th in the country. And you look at the top 10 here, Duke obviously at 10-0, a couple of big comebacks for the Dukies in that. We saw Kansas in the front end of this Hoop Hall Miami Invitational take care of Syracuse to remain undefeated. Any of these teams you think should be higher or maybe not so high in the top 10? I think right now it's looking pretty good. Texas A&M is a team and in the SEC, obviously Florida and Kentucky, terrific. But Texas A&M could be a team that could sneak up on some people. They've got all kinds of sides inside. Robert Williams is playing terrific, and they're shooting the basketball well. And they can shoot the basketball. They defend. Wouldn't be surprised to see Texas A&M potentially winning the SEC this year. Yeah, with that front line. They're going to give Kansas all sorts of trouble. We saw earlier today, if you were watching on ESPN, Kansas looked really good against a really good Syracuse 2-3 zone defense, but they are alarmingly thin, literally and figuratively, on the front line. Now, they could get some reinforcements come December and January, but those are big question marks. Take a look at the strength of Bruce Brown. Picking up Aaron Young, 180 pound senior right off the floor. Miami continuing active on that defensive end. You can see you drive into the lane. They'll be strong with the basketball. All kinds of hands digging in there, trying to get a steal. Under seven to go. It's been all hurricanes. Young. And Walker grabs the rebound. Dying high for that rebound was Walker. 16 points, five boards for the freshman sensation. And a rare foul called in the act of shooting. Miami four for six from the stripe. Princeton four for five. I'll take 11 free throw attempts combined with six and a half minutes to go in the game any day, Sean. It's been a very clean basketball game. Both teams doing a good job defensively. Moving their feet. Playing good position defense. Miles Stevens checks back in. He's been held relatively in check. Only eight points for Stevens, averaging 14 and a half a game. Huell cleans up his miss. And Dwan Huell, held scoreless in the first half, has seven in the second half. Showing that bounce, that second jump. 
He missed the first shot, but he stayed with it. Quick off his feet. He put, get the put, but get the put back in. Walker. That one a little forced that time yeah. by Walker. Jim Laranagan, not a fan of hero ball. And he's taking really good shots here tonight. That was just a little bit forced. Tuesday, we'll have the 23rd annual Jimmy V Classic from Madison Square Garden. Our first game is number four, Villanova, and number 15, Gonzaga, at 7 Eastern. Then the old Big East rivals square off. Syracuse coming off their loss against Kansas, taking on the Yukon Huskies. Both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app. You know, Gonzaga for a team that made it to the finals last year. We talk about teams like Miami flying under the radar. I feel like the Zags are a little undervalued right now. They had a nice win against the Creighton Blue Jays last night. There's no question. They're not rebuilding. They're just getting more guys coming in. They got some really good players reloading and just playing great basketball. Mark Few has done a terrific job. I think sometimes the knock on Gonzaga is they play in a smaller conference. They don't get the competition night in and night out when they get the conference play. But they're willing to go play anybody anywhere in the non-conference. I would not be surprised if that's in the lead eight team again this year. And on the flip side of that, we saw on the side of our screen a couple of the numbers turned in by some of the key players for the Villanova Wildcats. What a job Jay Wright has done. No real drop off at all from that national championship team. You're not going to win a title every year, but he has his team right back in the hunt once again. And the Big East as a whole is a really talented conference top to bottom. And you look at building the program, and Jay Wright's done it. Start building it with four-year guys. So when some of those seniors move on, the next guy's ready to step up. Obviously got some really talented young talent coming in every year. A contribution from freshmen and sophomores. But a lot of those guys are staying three or four years. And you want to get old and stay old, and that's the recipe for success in college basketball. Jay Wright's done that as good as anybody. Deep three by Vasiljevic. I think that one was from Prime 112. Can the boys in the truck confirm that for me? Under five to go. We're seeing the full arsenal from the 10th ranked Miami Hurricanes. There's Stevens with the jumper. He's in double digits. Well, as usual, this Princeton Tiger team has gotten the lion's share of their points from the big three. Devin Kennedy with 11, Amir Bell with 13, Miles Stevens in double digits with 10. But that is certainly not near enough to compete with this talented Miami's te Miami team tonight. That's where you're, they're looking for that fourth or fifth, fifth option to kind of step up. And it's hard to do when you're up against a team like Miami. When you start getting in the conference playing the Ivy League, some more of those role players can maybe step up their game a little bit more. You'll see some more success from those guys. Young too strong. DeRosier gets a fresh shot clock. And Princeton can't do anything with it. It goes out of bounds. We're going to say it's going to stay Tigers basketball. Sebastian Much, one of those guys that can maybe step up his game. Only a freshman, has played well, averaging nine and a half points over his last three games. So it's showing some signs. Struggled a little bit here tonight. Poked away by Amp Lawrence. What would you say a weakness could be that better teams could expose against this Miami team. We see they have length, they have athleticism, they have inside, outside. What do you think they need to improve on? You would think you'd want to attack them inside. That's when you're looking at this roster, looking at this team, somebody with some size could give them some trouble. And that's why I was very impressed with Miami at Minnesota. That's what Minnesota has. Two terrific players in Lynch and Murphy on the inside. And Miami was able to compete. Well, tonight has been all Miami Hurricanes. The number 10 ranked Canes rolling over Princeton. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zales. Tis the season to save and sparkle more than ever.
and by the long-lasting power of Energizer. Still going. Well, Sports Center on ESPN with Scott Van Pelt follows all the games on Championship Saturday. Reese Davis, Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet, and Booger McFarland. They'll all join the show to talk college football playoff top four. Plus, head coaches from around the country state their case. And Tiger Woods struggling in the third round today at the Hero World Challenge. Highlights and more coming up on Sports Center at midnight with SVP. Rich Hollenberg, Sean Harrington, the rest of the ESPN crew from American Airlines Arena in the nightcap of the Hoop Hall Miami Invitational. And an indication of just how young this Jim Laranaga coached Miami Hurricanes team is. They have three sophomores and two freshmen on the floor right now. And Chris Likes, one of those freshmen, went down along the baseline and the medical team out to check on him immediately. So the clock stops with 3.02 to go. Let's take a look. And here's Chris Lice right now. A screen coming over. He just ran into a brick wall. Wasn't expecting that screen coming. Set by Noah Bramlage. But slow to get up. Chris Lice, five foot seven, 160 pound freshman. I'll tell you, you stand around this kid he looks like he might be shorter than 5'7", but way more than 160. He is built like a bowling ball. He's helped off the floor. Coach L going to check on one of his youngsters. That's just the size right there because of that 5'7 frame. He went right into a screen. And I think a technical foul was just called as well on Miami. And that's the last thing you want to see. And just swatting the ball after the whistle is where they're getting them. Free throw off the mark. It's Vittorio Reynoso Avila who's checked into the game. Mitch Henderson going deep into his bench now with the game well out of hand. 73-47 with under three minutes to go. So it'll stay Princeton basketball. Not an easy thing to do there. Get subbed into the game for the first time. Then you got to go shoot free throws all by yourself at the line. Now we'll get a chance to redeem himself. There you go. It's a different feel when there's those guys around the lane and when you're out there all by yourself shooting them. That's how you practice them, all by yourself. There's nobody there. But in a game situation, it's got a different feel to it. Sometimes those are tough ones to knock down. Well, we talked about Miami's schedule. Princeton Tigers, no more cupcakes for them. They've played some tough teams already. On December 6th, they're going to go to GW. Then they go out west and face USC, a top 25 team. And then they'll also be in the Diamond Head Classic. And they're going to take on Middle Tennessee in the opening round. One of the best teams in the NCAA tournament the last couple of years. Mitch Anderson wanted to challenge this group. He thought they were ready for it. Play some good competition in the non-conference schedule. And get ready to go then for conference play in the Ivy League. That Middle Tennessee game will be on December 22nd. You can catch that right here on ESPNU. What a job Kermit Davis has done in Murfreesboro. Giddy Potts and company. Third straight year, they'll be prohibitive favorites in their league. Under the two minute mark. First five, six, seven minutes of this game, Princeton was hanging tough with the 10th ranked Hurricanes. And then Miami went on a major run and never looked back. Vasiljevic with his fourth three of the night. And they've been hot from the outside. For the fifth time this year, 
He's had multiple threes in the game. What did Mitch Henderson tell us? We have to have low turnovers and hope they shoot a low percentage. If one of those two things don't happen, we're going to be in trouble. And tonight, this Miami Hurricanes team is shooting 51% from the field. And that's tough to overcome because of how good they are defensively. They're not going to make it easy on you on that end. But they're getting good looks and easy baskets. You're in for a long night. That was the case for Princeton. Rodney Miller with the left hand, and the bench loves it. Seldom used Rodney Miller, the seven-footer out of New York, gets a three-point opportunity. Showing some good footwork on the inside. The old school up and under. Using that left hand. Rodney Miller spent some time at two vaunted high school basketball programs, St. Benedict's in New Jersey, part of that great Gray Bees program, and then finished up at Oak Hill Academy. Obviously, that young man has some talent. One minute to go. Three-pointer is good. That's Noah Bramlage, the 6'9", 220-pound junior out of Ohio. Here's Wardenberg, short on the three. So Miami's going to move on to be 7-0. Just a handful of teams still undefeated in the NCAA Division I basketball. And they will at very least hold on to their number 10 ranking. Who knows, depending on what else happens around the country. Maybe they move up a spot or two. But make no mistake about it, this Jim Laranaga coach team is here for the long haul in the ACC, and once they start on that gauntlet of a schedule, they are going to be a nightmare matchup team. We're seeing the talent. There's no question about it. Miami can compete with anybody. It was the youth was in question coming into the season. How would that sophomore freshman group play? And they've answered the bell. They've looked terrific so far. And very convincing win at Minnesota, a very tough environment. Impressive to see the freshmen and the sophomores play well in that environment. And the consistency of the young guys. How consistent will a young guy be? Very consistent so far for Miami as well this season. Well, the fourth ranked team in the nation, as far as defense goes, holds the Princeton Tigers to just 52 points, and Miami puts up 80 in the 28-point victory, and that's the Hurricanes' first 7-0 start since 2014-15. A team that is certainly built to make yet another Sweet 16 for Jim Laranaga and Coral Gables. What are your takeaways, Sean? What do you think? Very impressed with both sides of the ball right now for Miami. Hanging their hat on that defense, doing a terrific job, making it difficult for teams to score. And then offensively, they were lights out from three right now. So Miami moves on, 7-0 on the season. 80-52 is the final score. When we come back, we'll hear from victorious head coach, Jim Laranaga. Miami closes out the Hoopal Miami Invitational with a resounding 80-52 win over the Princeton Tigers to remain undefeated now, 7-0. And joined by victorious head coach Jim Laranaga, wrapping things up here from the American Airlines Center. I know coming in, you wanted to talk defense. Your team is one of the best defensive teams in the country, statistically-wise. And you said the first thing you were going to tell your team is you have to contest threes without fouling. You held them to 8 for 32 from beyond the arc. That's pretty yeah. good. The, the things you got to worry about when you play Princeton, first of all, they move the ball so well, and they challenge you because even their five-man can shoot threes. Our bigs have been used to guarding big guys around the basket. Now they had to adjust to uh, guarding guys who played on the perimeter and handle the ball a lot. Uh, but the, the big key was, was the defense on Devin Kennedy, who's a fantastic offensive player, and I, I thought we did a great job. He ended up 5 for 16 from the field. DJ Vasilovich, uh, even Chris Likes guarded him some. Uh, so the defense was very, very good. 
And then once we got it going defensively, we were able to score too. Talk so much about Lonnie Walker, obviously coming into the year, getting all the accolades that he's gotten. Had the injury in the summer. How is he coming along? Look very impressive here tonight. What do you see out of him moving forward this year? Where's he at physically? You know, I think this was the first game that I've seen him be aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, he's made some aggressive plays, but tonight he was aggressive from start to finish. He was looking to score. He was looking to rebound. And he's so athletic when he gets into the open court. He's really terrific. We were uh, talking during the telecast how you might not have just one top NBA prospect at shooting guard. You might have two, Walker being one, but Bruce Brown was dynamite tonight. Now, Bruce Brown is a legitimate player in all aspects of the game. He defends, he rebounds, he handles, he shoots the three, he drives it, he blocks shots. I mean, he's in, in every aspect of the game, he's involved. Got a really young team. Some of the question marks was maybe how would you handle an atmosphere like Minnesota? Terrific game there. How would you handle a huge oh, okay. win coming back with a kind of overlooked Princeton? You guys look locked in today. Well, the that's the thing I've been team? very, very pleased about uh, in practice and in every game, our effort. You know, defense, you, you got to give great effort to play de good defense. And to play great defense, it takes sustained effort all the time. And so we've been that way for seven games. Hopefully that will continue and we can get better. Uh, I thought there were some serious breakdowns defensively that we can correct. Well, I know you have a couple of games before this, but I just need to know. I know you're you're a fashion clothes horse. I am. Do you, do you have your Aloha shirts ready for the Diamond Head <laughs> Classic? Yeah, we are going out to Hawaii at Christmas time, but we got uh, Boston University on Tuesday, then George Washington after our exams uh, up in the Washington D.C. area. We're bringing uh, Chris Likes back home. That was a game we scheduled for him because. Uh, He's from the D.C. area. He's got a lot of friends and fans there, and his, obviously his family. Well, you were certainly impressive tonight. You remain undefeated at 7-0. Jim Laranega, congratulations on the win. Thanks, Rich. And that closes out the Hoop Paul Miami Invitational. Miami with an 80-52 win over Princeton. For Sean, I'm Rich. So long from South Beach.